Lately, we've been talking about be thou an example of the believer. Somebody say, I'm an example. Come on, somebody say, like, an example, an example. And we looked at the fact that an example is a model, and a model is that which manufacturers create to stimulate buyers. When God created Jesus, or when he allowed Jesus to come into the earth as a man, God allowed men to see him and desire to be like him. Amen. Not automatically, but they realized once the Holy Ghost came, he said, you can do what Jesus did. Amen. You are now that model. Whether you accept it or not, someone wants to be like you. Amen. The lazy people that want to be lazy, if you're lazy, they want to be like you. Amen. Many people are on fire because of your fire. Amen. Most people are lukewarm because of your lukewarmity. <laughs> Most people are cold, frigid air, frozen, ice pops because of you. Someone's following you. If everybody around you is backsliding, you're the leader. We don't want to own up to it, but everyone around us are influenced by us. Amen. Or you're being influenced by them. Amen. I heard this one time, if you're the guru in your group, get out that group. Amen. And what happens is we, we're going to look at today of the danger of this fellowship. Amen. You know, we talked about it in the beginning of our series how the manner of some is is forsaking the gathering together of themselves in the assembly. In other words, can I say it in English? People don't go to church. <laughs> Let's make it English. People that don't go to church don't understand that they're being dis disseminated. They're being tricked. To think that you can serve God home. You can get to heaven home. But serving God home, that's not going to happen. Because if God cannot express himself the way he would do in a corporate environment in your house, then you might not be hearing from the right God. Now, just to keep your attention, can I give you a quick story? Once upon a time, there was a man named Jesus. And he had 12 little disciples. Disciple number one, two, three, four, five, six, and twelve of them. And then he had one little bad disciple, Judas. And little Judas, he, you know, did his part. He was bad, Judas. <laughs> and Judas died, according to the scriptures. And so the disciples are now all born again, but they decide, let's go to a prayer meeting. In the upper room. In their own house. Same place where the Holy Ghost came, but before the Holy Ghost came, the disciples had a meeting. They had their very own Bible study. And they used the scriptures. And they found in the book of Psalm a verse that they felt pertained to Judas. See, when you're not in the corporate fellowship, you will hear verses that make sense. And you will respond to them erroneously just because they make sense to you. So the great apostles, born again as they were, they saw a verse in the Psalms that says concerning Judas, they said, let another take his bishopric. In other words, they saw in the scriptures that this was going to happen to Judas. And they said, well, it must needs be that someone takes his place. So here they are, this fellowship, they're in a prayer meeting, they're born again, they're in their own house. They're in a house, like many people that are in these last days not going to church, they're in their house. I can worship in my house. Yes, you can, but you might not hear what God is saying. Because these very 12 walked with Jesus' disciples, fellowshipping in prayer, reading the Bible. The first verse they come up with, they said, we got to replace Judas. They found the scripture that said to do it, but they thought it was their job. See, when you're not in God's house, you don't know your job. Nobody can tell you what to do in your own house. But when you're in God's house, God can tell you that's not your job. So what do they do? They go shoot dice. Oh, forgive me for saying that. They went for what they know. They shot lots, you know, dice, and they picked. Um, 
this guy you never heard of and never heard of him again. And so what happens? Now, Paul is raised up, the one God called, knocks him off the horse. God places him as the replacement of Judas. When you're in your own house, this fellowship from God's house, you're, you're saved, you can make it to heaven, but you also can make some very great errors. That's in the book of Acts, chapter 1. The reason why I'm trying to tell you this is because you, you, you got to make full proof of your ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Practicing on your kids don't work. Amen. Practicing on your friends don't work. Amen. When you love your enemies, that shows it works. Amen. When you go to church where they don't love you and you still show up, that's where it works. Amen. People leave church, oh, there ain't no love there. Ain't no love in you, that's why you laugh. All that preacher wants is my money. You ain't got your money. Amen. Everybody has a reason to disfellowship, but nobody realized that. The only reason for disfellowship is the devil trying to get you back on his ship. You can't see clear after a while. I don't care what you think. My house is holy. Oh, yeah? Amen. How come nobody want to go there? All right, let me keep moving. So you see, so in... This fellowship, the very apostles, yes. they were born again, but at the time they were not filled yes. with the Holy Ghost. Yes. And so they made that error, and they picked the 12 disciples. And God said, you can pick them all you want. Where are you today? Amen. Are you making full proof? Are you being an example of the believer, whereas God is guiding your decisions? Amen. Or are you finding a verse in the Bible and you're saying that this is God? I hear crickets. We must be down south. And so when we look at it, I want to talk to you about the three U's. I, how many realize there's two sides to every story and then the truth? And I was thinking, I wrote down the two U's. And if I was to say the two U's, the two of you would say the two of me, the two yous, would be the unsaved me, the old man, and the saved me. No, no there's, a, there's three yous. There's the unsaved you, and there's the saved you, and then there's the Holy Ghost filled you. The apostles didn't never meet the Holy Ghost filled them. They went on their own salvation. They were just saved. They were not filled with the Holy Ghost studying the scriptures. And they made that error. How many of you know the Holy Ghost filled you? Amen. Hallelujah. They're all leaving now. Hallelujah. The church is very quiet. Hallelujah. Have you ever met the better you? Most people in churches are just surviving, just trying to make it into heaven. But God said, when I'm going to fill you with the Holy Ghost... And the Holy Ghost is what? Righteousness. Peace. Well, the kingdom, of, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Where at? The in the Holy Ghost. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you can bring the kingdom of heaven into the earth. And you won't be looking to escape so easy. Most people want, y'all just want to be blessed. Because they feel as if they get blessed, they become better than regular people. Which is the truth. He that has the gold makes the rules. I mean, I know it's not scripture, but you know, all right, never mind. But what happens is God purposed your prosperity predicated on your advancing the kingdom. But nobody wants to tell you that. But I'm telling you, there's three U's. Saved you, unsaved you, and the Holy Ghost filled you. You get along with the save you because the save you is a little chicken. You won't get along with the Holy Ghost filled you because the Holy Ghost filled you is going to seek and save that which is lost. It's going to heal that which is sick. It's going to open up the eyes of that which is blind. And many times the unsaved person might be the one you're living with 
But the Holy Ghost filled you will fix them. Amen. The saved you will tolerate them. Yes. All right. All right. Amen. So we have to be an example. Let's say I'm an example of the believer. And we're not going to escape being not filled anymore. Amen. You can't expect to live your life, go to work, pay your bills, go to church, pay your tithes, and get filled. Amen. You got to get filled when you know you're empty and you're crying out to God. Yes. And go real quick to Romans chapter 8. Look at somebody real boldly and say, I'm going to get super filled. See, we've been, you know, uh, how can I say this in a nice way? Evil communications corrupt good manners. Amen. Many of us have been around lukewarm people so long that that's our model. That's our norm. Yes. When you're not around people on fire, you don't want to be on fire. Mm. When the last time you said, I want to be like such and such, they're on fire for God. Yes. Most of the time you'd be like, how you doing? How was your day? Praise God. You had a good day? What kind of life is that? Asking somebody, how's their day? The believer should be saying, how many people got help through your day? They came, the apostles came back bearing witness. They came back testifying. We're fellowshipping all the time. Hey, Deacon Cleo, how was your day? Oh, well, I drived all day. It was raining. It was very hard. So we don't know the Holy Ghost filled you. Amen. And we accept it. Because as long as they're sinners worse than us, we think we're okay. Oh yeah, it's going to get hard. But Romans chapter 8, y'all know this verse. Chapter, Romans chapter 8 verse 28. If y'all still here, say I'm still here. I'm still here. Sorry I had to shock you with the apostles' uh, Bible study. But most home fellowships, you know, I'm not saying that they're not of God, but it's very hard to really hear from God when it's just them. When it's open to everybody, then God can show up. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he did also, he, excuse me, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I read that really fast because all of you are old enough to know exactly what it meant. But what I want to look at is verse Number 29, it says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. When, you, when the model was created, it was Jesus the Christ. And every one of us have a predestination. Amen. You have been predestined to be conformed to that image. You can lie to yourself and say, God wants this for me and God wants that for me. Lie, lie all you want. God wants whatever he wanted for Jesus. That's what he wants for you. Amen. Oh, the amens are going down because they don't like what Jesus got. Right. See, and we get tricked to think that um, I can do my own thing. That's what got you hell bound. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show forth. Come on, say it like you mean. Say, I'm going to show forth my conformity to the image of Christ. 